Galileo, William Shakespeare, Martin Luther, Charles Darwin, Albert Einstein, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson. What do all of these great thinkers have in common? A classical education. While many of us in America have no idea what this even means, this is the method by which the majority of history's most influential people were educated. In our search for a school for our children, I discovered classical education. And the more I read, the more I became convinced that this is the best way to educate kids. Not only is it time tested, but it's experiencing a resurgence today as educators search for more effective ways to teach kids. Let me tell you my story. This is a picture of my husband Peter and our four children, ages 28 to 18. When they were young, like every parent, we searched for the best school for our kids. We tried a public school with an excellent reputation. We tried a private college prep program that was also well known. And we even tried religious denominational schools. And in most cases, we just found that our kids weren't being academically challenged. And they weren't receiving the values that we thought were so important for them to learn. It was very frustrating. Well, it turns out our frustration was warranted. If you look at how American students are compared to the rest of the world, you may be very surprised. Of 34 developed our students are performing only 14th in reading, 17th in science, and abysmal 25th in math. Remember, this is out of only 34 developed countries. These are appalling results. And on the values front, things aren't any better. Some of you may recognize this young woman. Her name is Hadia Pendleton. She was the unfortunate victim of a fatal shooting in Chicago just a few months ago. In a newspaper article that covered the story, a Reverend Michael Flager, who was actually at the funeral, was quoted as asking, when did we lose our soul? Clearly, he was asking, how in this society have we become so filled with violence that we've practically lost our humanity, our soul? Well, it was that same frustration with a lack of values and the fact that our kids weren't being academically challenged that caused us to keep searching for other school options. As I did that, I came across an ad for a school that had opened in Rochester just a few years earlier. I read the synopsis of that school, and I knew in an instant that it's exactly what we were looking for. So I contacted the school, and I said, are there any schools like this in the Twin Cities? And they said, none that we know of, but this school was started by six families, and you can do it too. What? Start a school? That was the furthest thing from my mind. But you know what? We were so hungry for this type of education that against all odds, that's exactly what we did. We started a classical school. So you may be wondering, what is classical education anyway? Well, let me tell you. It involves three stages of learning. The grammar stage in the lower school, where we focus on the tools of the subject. The logic phase in the middle school, where we focus on understanding of the topic and the rhetoric phase in the high school, where we focus on application and communication. All of these stages integrate beautifully with a child's natural progression of cognitive development. Let's start by looking at the grammar stage. In the grammar stage, kids are, developmentally speaking, able to memorize information very easily. They're like sponges. Those of you who are parents know, at this age, the kids will watch the same movie over and over, They'll read the same book over and over, and they never get tired of it. So what you do is you pack as much information as we can into songs, chants, rhymes, sound offs, things they don't mind repeating over and over. We add actions to make them even more engaging, and the kids are having so much fun that they hardly even We're able to teach the students the chemical elements through a song, parts of speech and how to diagram sentences through chants. It's amazing what they can learn using this method. And another part of classical education is that we teach using the classics beginning in the grammar stage. They've stood the test of time. They, they have all the wisdom of the ages, and they're so full of rich content that the kids love reading them. Also, we teach cursive writing in the grammar stage because of all the well-documented cognitive benefits. And Latin is begun in the grammar stage. 
Latin forms the foundation of all the Romance languages, and approximately 65% of the English language is based upon Latin. So students who know Latin tend to perform much better on standardized tests down the road, and more importantly, they can learn modern foreign languages easily. And also history is an important part where we teach it from ancient all the way through modern, sequentially multiple times throughout the 12 years of an education. And we focus on using the primary documents rather than textbooks so that the students are actually reading what the people themselves had to think and say at the time. Now let's look at the logic phase. The logic phase is marked by kids who are becoming much more argumentative. They want to know how and they want to know why. If you're a parent, you um, So what we do is we again capture where they're at. And now we introduce formal research. We do compare contrast exercises. They write from the perspective of historical and literary figures. Any activity that gets the students to develop a deep understanding of the subject they're learning, because that's the goal at the logic phase. We give them formal logic class where they learn the art of argumentation, how to develop a formal argument, a reasoned argument, how to recognize logical fallacies. And then they can practice these in debates. They begin doing a lot of debate in the middle school years. Also, writing becomes very important during the logic phase. We teach the students the process of how to write, and that gets emphasized all the way through their senior high years. Then, the rhetoric phase. The rhetoric phase is marked by kids, developmentally speaking, who are becoming independent, they're forming their own opinions, and they're starting to separate from their families. So now, once again, we're going to take advantage of where they're at. Now, not only do we want them to know the tools of the subject and then understand that subject, now we want them to analyze and synthesize the information, form their own opinions, and then communicate those opinions in an effective and persuasive manner. This is what we call the crown jewel of a classical education because it's the culmination of everything that we've worked towards. The students are given lots of opportunities for deep discussion um, where they can practice those analyst, analysis and synthesis ideas. They can also practice their debate skills and learn to develop arguments that are based upon reason. Then they're given two years of formal rhetoric training where they learn the art of writing and speaking articulately and persuasively. Most important with a classical education is that the students learn how to learn. And what about from a values perspective? Well, historically, a classical education has addressed both the mind and the soul. At our school, we nurture the soul through Judeo-Christian values and beliefs. While we don't require our students to be Christian, we do want to make sure they understand that's the perspective that we're teaching from. And then we expose them to all the other faith traditions, and that way they are able to understand the other viewpoints in the world. Well, let me tell you our results. Our students are performing well on every standardized test, but most of you are familiar with the ACTs and the SATs as our college entrance exams. Our students are performing in the top 13% of the nation on the ACTs, and they're performing in the top 17% of the nation in the SATs. And I want you to know that we are not just taking cream of the crop children. We're taking students who are average and beyond and achieving these kinds of results with this method. And you can imagine they're being offered great scholarships as a result, approximately $30,000 per student per year of college. But even more important than that is these children are learning how to become deep thinkers. They're learning how to speak persuasively and articulately. They're learning how to reason logically, and they're learning how to write well. They have, as I said, learned how to learn. And other tangible benefits that we're seeing is the kids have learned to develop respect for others, including those who have opposing values and beliefs. And they're internalizing their values so that they have a guide for moral decision making. They're becoming responsible, accountable, putting the focus off of themselves onto others. 
And they, develop, they have developed the strength of character to act compassionately. Well, with these results, I finally had peace concerning my children's education. Not only was I no longer frustrated, I was excited to be able to share this method with others. So I'd like you to imagine with me for a moment, what would it be like if everyone in our culture had a classical education? And I mean imagine this, from the hallways of Washington, D.C., to our nation's media outlets, to our school systems, to our communities, and into our neighborhoods, what would it be like? Citizens who know their history so well, so deeply, that we are less likely to repeat the mistakes of the past. Imagine citizens who base their opinion upon reason rather than emotion, and who recognize logical fallacies so they're not so easily deceived and manipulated. Imagine citizens being able to express their thoughts and ideas in an articulate and persuasive manner. And imagine respectful as opposed to just denigrating those with whom we disagree. Wouldn't this just be a pleasant change of scenery across all of these different realms of social interaction? Well, with this in mind, could it be possible that we'd all be better off with a classical education? With the results that we're demonstrating, what type of education do you want our future leaders to have? What about your own child? We know this works. <laughs>